Hello, entrepreneurs, dreamers, business owners, and happy people with high hopes. Welcome to Cash Flows with your host, Cash Matthews. All right, again, well, there is uh, no time like the present to do something magnificent. So, ready to get the start party, ready to get the starty parted. There we go. All right, we are off to a, a glamorous start here. I've got my tongue all tangled. First try. And first try, man. It is awesome. We don't do no retakes here at the Cash Flow Show. So, hello, I'm Cash Matthews. I am your host for a show that we all call Cash Flows. And uh, our topics are various things that make life better. It can be business, finance, money, relationships, or even, you know, the bigger questions in life, like, you know, on a cloudy day, what color of worm do you use for a largemouth bass? Uh, do you like ketchup on your hot dogs? And, uh, you know, bigger questions like, could you imagine a world with no hypothetical situations? That's us. So lots of dad jokes. <laughs> we have fun at cash flows and uh, we're here to promote the good life. And we hope that you can share a few minutes of your good life with us each week as we explore these topics that we think make life better. So I'm here with my uh, co-conspirator, Mr. Kenneth Bacham. Kenneth. Yes, sir. Welcome to cash flows and I got to be honest, what's a guy like you doing in a nice place like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I'd gotten pulled over is, is what it was. And, uh, the officer said, well, here's the thing, you know, you got to sign here. It's not admission of guilt. Um, but you're going to have to either go to court or, uh, we've got this guy doing a, a podcast. He needs, he needs some, uh, some help with the audio video and stuff. So, so this is community service for you. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few hours of community service going on. All right. Well, but, man, uh, that, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, very cool. Um, you know, we, uh, we're just getting this thing started. We've got a lot of these podcasts coming up with local entrepreneurs and, uh, you've been such a great help just developing this idea. What do you see happening here with uh, two knuckleheads and some amazing guests? Well, so two knuckleheads, I'm not sure which two it is since there's, there's three in the room. So oh, that's a good point. Let's, <laughs> let's just take that one and be careful with that one. But, but no, I mean, you know, my thing is, um, you know, I think it's going to be an exciting time. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I just can't quite figure out. I've seen people, you know, in meetings and stuff like throw squirrels if someone gets off topic, but I'm trying to figure out what's the deal with the squirrel in the background over here. Oh, um, I call that a squirrel with a nut in his mouth. Oh. He's he's found his purpose. He's been immortalized mm. uh, here in uh, a very delicate fabric. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's something just, I grew up eating squirrel because you could shoot them and eat them. And I, I like a reminder that we don't have to eat squirrel anymore. And yeah, I, the, there are people out there in uh, Wanette and Shawnee and Tecumseh <laughs> that know squirrel soup very, very well. So we're going to put him... Uh, Front and center. And uh, all right, there we go. Yeah, Thanks for pointing is. that out. I, yeah, for sure. I appreciate that. That's kind of who I am. Happy to help. That's my job. That's I have to do that as part of the community service. All right. <laughs> well, I'll make sure I write a nice report when we get back to I, office. My, Officer Green, who pulled you over. My PO will appreciate that. All right. Well, let's, uh, are we ready to carry on here? Sure. All right. So, Cash Flows is a show. Our, one of our goals, and you can see right on our moniker over there, our goal is to help people take the next step. And we call that fire, aim, ready. And so often you meet people in the world, in the business world, Kenneth, uh, in the professional world, in the athletic world, uh, and they kind of get stuck and they they kind of go in a reverse process, ready, aim, fire. And for most people, though, it's like, you know, it's, it's aim, 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 and they, they never really ever pull the trigger. Thank you. And uh, so one of the things we like to do in, a, in an environment like this is be encouraging to our guests, encouraging to the people listening. And, uh, you know, so hope, hopefully we'll do a little bit of that here today um, in the next three and a half hours. So let's, uh, let's right, get the right. party started here. So with that, it is my pleasure to introduce today, um, uh, and I'll get to the intro part. My wife, Katie, and I moved here about three years ago, and about a year into the deal, uh, we started looking for gluten-free food. My wife and I, Katie's, uh, she's intolerant of many things, uh, but gluten among those being the chief elements that she is opposed to. And uh, we met Jillian somehow through somebody, uh, and she had a gluten-free bakery, 
And it was Jillian's uh, Unbelievable Cupcakes was actually the name of that endeavor. And we met her, and we were just wildly impressed with her. We thought she was 12. Um, and here's this young person with an idea, with a fire in her belly, with some excitement, with some enthusiasm, with some commitment, who had an idea and just freaking ran with it. You know, her, her whole idea was, give me the baton, let me run with it. And Kenneth, when we met her, like she was on fire. We had not yet started, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the business owners networking group after we introduced Jillian, but uh, we had not yet started that, but she was just a person out telling a story that she was passionate about. And we were impressed with her belief and her work ethic and the way she carried herself, and we still are. So with that, let me introduce uh, our second guest of Cash Flows. The one and only Jillian Olivia. Jillian, say hello to everybody. Hey, um, that was an amazing intro. Thank well, you so much. Well, uh, right now, people all around the country, all six of them listening, are <laughs> clapping in their cars. So yeah, yeah. you can even hear them if you listen carefully. So um, this is the second of these podcasts that we hope are very, very many. And uh, we're glad you're here. And so thank you for that. Now, we are here, and one of our sponsors is the Tulsa Business Owners Networking Group. And before we talk about you, we're going to talk a little bit about this group where our friendship really grew together. And talk to our audience a little bit about your role in, we call it the bong. Now, the, Okay, so I apologize. I'm a nerd. I didn't know what a bong was until about six months ago. I, we started at Business Owners Networking Group. We didn't know that that spelled bong when we found out. Uh, bong is a thing where people like they hide their drugs or something. But anyway, uh, you were one of the first people to join the bong group. Tell us a little bit about your experience and then what kind of how you perceive the bong group. Well, when you guys first introduced yourselves to me, um, I thought you kind of thought you guys were weird. Um, Thank well, you. first of all, Katie, when she reached out to me, your wife reached out to me. Um, she's like, can I meet you at a coffee shop? I was like, um, that's weird. I've never had a customer ask me to coffee. Um, and then right before I show up, she's like, can my husband join? I'm like, okay, like what is happening here? Um, and then we sat down for coffee and I think it was like a two and a half hour conversation where I, like I left and I was like, wow, I think I just found my people. Like I, I turned into such a black sheep. When I was growing up, like no one understood me, no one, nobody got that that kind of mindset. And then after talking to you, I was like, oh my gosh, he gets the mindset. He has that that drive that pushes you further. And then when Bong really started to grow, like it was just a ton of us that all of us felt um, alienated from society, but we all found each other and we became family because that's what we were looking for was that family. And now every first Tuesday of the month, I get to go and hang out with my family. And it's been amazing. And I'll move things around for it. I'll make stuff happen for it. It doesn't matter. I'll just, it's been incredible. Well, we know you have a big audience. Tell, tell your friends and family that are listening to this podcast right now, kind of what the bong is and how it's worked for you. And maybe if you've had some accolades in the bong and made a few friends or gotten some business, just Tell us a little bit more. Go two, three hours. Okay. Yeah. Use that two to three hours. My bedtime's coming up, so we might need to pump the brakes on that. But um, <laughs> as far as accolades and things like that, I was, so I went to my first bong meeting, and then right after that, the next one, I was given Entrepreneur of the Month. Um, and um, it was incredible. It was amazing. And then we go to the January bong event, and you stand up, and you're like, we do Entrepreneur of the Year. And you start talking about this person, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, wow, I have to meet this person. I have to know who this is. So I was I was literally ready to write it down in my little notebook, and you go, Jillian and Olivia. And I'm like, I'm sorry, who? <laughs> <laughs> Did he just say me? And so I'm pretty sure everybody in my, my close circle knows that I have that accolade, and it was amazing for me to get. And it really, like, although I still had that fire, like, it gave me even more of a fire because you told me once, you said, entrepreneurs don't get rewarded like that. And so it really reminded me that I was so blessed and I was so thankful to have it. Cool. And, it, and you're, you speak every month at the Business Owners Networking Group, and you do, what, what do we call your? Jillian's your, Health Minute. Jillian's, yeah, Jenny, Jillian's Miracle Moment. 
or whatever. We'll, 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 it's evolving <laughs> as we all are. Well, very cool. Well, Jillian, you've been a big part of the bong group and, uh, you were, you know, there was another person like members one, two, and three, but you were right there in the middle of all of it and you've seen it grow and you've been to almost everything that we've done. And, uh, it's been really awesome to watch you, um, you know, grow your business. Now you had a moment, um, in your business that to me was even more impressive is your business wasn't going in the right direction. And, uh, I think a lot of the people out in, out in the bongdom, uh, can I say that? Okay. I don't, I don't I'll, I'll allow it. You'll okay. I'll allow it. The judges have allowed it. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of people were watching you going, man, she's so young and so inexperienced. How can this possibly work for her? And then, then you had a few things uh, rise up in your business. And I think everybody listening, um, has probably had something come up in their business that just knocks them out or could knock them out, but it didn't knock you out. Um, it, it fired you up and, uh, to watch you get started and make progress and then lose a little ground and then claw your way back, you know, with every ounce of energy in your body. Like for me watching that as a 60 year old guy, man, like right there, right there, that thing for me was what's missing for a lot of people in our country. And it's called grit. And, and, and right there you have grit. So I, you know, I want to say thank you for just letting us have a ringside seat to your life, which is beautiful. And, uh, so let's, um, let's dig in and learn a little bit more about you and your business. Uh, I know who you are and it took me a little while to figure it out, but, um, you know, right, right now, tell us who is Jillian Olivia? Like what, what, uh, man, I feel like I'm interviewing somebody at a, at a rock and roll station. Like, man, yeah, what, yeah. tell us about your album and what was your motivation? <laughs> so, um, well, when I was younger, I grew up hearing my parents talk about money a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. She just said when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Those okay. were the days. I apologize. Please welcome back to the mic, the 2021 <laughs> Entrepreneur of the Year, Jillian Olivia. Please start over. Yeah, when I was younger, because, you know, I did have a younger time. Um, I grew up hearing my family talk about money all the time. And it led me to start selling candy on the bus and start cleaning my friends' rooms and even houses for money. And wow. I really found a passion for making money. And But more than that, I found a love for the work. I found, like, that true love for putting in a crap ton of work and it was really fun um but I didn't realize what that was doing is it was turning me into more of a black sheep than I already was um and nobody really loves to work <laughs> um when I ended up losing my swimming career I found hope in business and then when I ended up losing my grandmother to diabetes I found hope in making sure that never happened to anybody again. I know that was a pivotal moment um, in your life when you lost your grandmother. How long ago was that? It was over seven years ago. Right, and it still impacts you today, right? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fire that not many people grab a hold of, but you did, and I think that's beautiful. Well, tell us, um, you mentioned your swimming career, and I, I want to hear a little bit more about that. Um, I, I know you, there's some awards in there that you want to, you want to dive into that? Is Let's that dive into your swimming career. Let's see if yeah. these questions will float. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my sister started swimming actually, and I don't know why, but, um, it's kind of one of those things where if your sister's swimming, you got to be better than her. So I, it, it was, it pushed me most of the time. So I just had to be faster than Kate. And, um, that led us to swimming almost 40 hours a week, um, yeah. for years. And we got good, really good. And our, our team ended up taking state. We had some pretty good records in there for a while. Um, I found out I had asthma. And I've since, like, trained my lungs out of it. But um, I realized that backstroke, you actually don't really have to hold your breath. So I, I got really good at backstroke. Right. How'd that turn out for you, like, in the state competition? Uh, yeah, I ended up uh, taking a state record for it. So, oh, a state record. Cool. It was uh, broken very quickly after. Okay, me, so I know a little bit about you. I, I know that you're swimming. You're an athlete at one of the highest levels a person can climb to. 
and you had asthma, but you also had some issues with your spine growing up. Yeah, so I have scoliosis. I have a 55-degree curve in my back. I, I don't know what that means exactly. Most people don't, probably don't know the severity of that. But uh, why didn't that stop you? I don't know. It just didn't seem like enough, I guess. I was, I mean, it was painful. It was very painful. There was days that I couldn't get out of bed. Um, and I remember sometimes having to call my mom into my room to help me up. Because um, I just feel like when you sleep, your body stiffens. And I would I'd have to get her out of, help me out of bed. And I'd be crying as I got dressed. Um, even now, if, like, we get large weather fluctuations, my back hurts. Um, but, I mean, when I went to doctors and they were like, oh, yeah, take this painkiller and then be on opiates for the rest of your life. I was like, that's not it. Wow. Um, and then they were like, when you're 18, you'll get surgery and then you'll relearn how to walk and it'll be fine. I'm like, I don't think that's fine. Um, and so I, like, did the research, found out that um, if you eat an anti-inflammatory diet, you can reduce the pain around your spine. So I was like, okay, we'll do that. Wow. Um, you sleep on the floor. You keep your back in alignment. Um, so I slept on a shiki bouton, which probably pronouncing that Wait, say, say that again, a shiki what? Shiki bouton? You heard of one of those? No. <laughs> it's a three to five inch pa- pad made out of 100% organic cotton um, that you sleep on on the floor or on like a tatimi mat. Shiki bouton. Can we spell that? Wait, isn't that a song by Casey and the Sunshine Band? Shiki I'm, Bhutan? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, not I'm sorry. Sure. That's, uh, I'll explain that I think to that's you later. Something else. I was going to say that predates me. <laughs> ah, there As do my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, but I, I like this story. I mean, I don't like the story. I like the way the story went. That you're born with curvature in your spine. You have trouble getting out of bed. You have asthma. And you set the state record in swimming. I broke it, and then it got broken. But that's how records are supposed to happen. But during your lifetime and during your tenure, you did all you could. And you, Jillian, set the record. I mean, that's... It was awesome. Like, do you look at yourself in the mirror and, like, kind of just bob your head around and go, yeah, I did that? I try. (laughs) I try to remember it. It was so long ago that, like, every once in a while I'll completely forget. And somebody will bring it up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did that. Okay, so let's talk about common things. I read in your bio that you're a dog person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I am I am the amazing mother to one incredible dog. Well, now you have two dogs in your house. Mm, we don't want to talk about him. The other dog we don't like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Tell me tell me real quick about your dog. And Nani? Oh yeah. my goodness. So, uh, like you, I actually like Kenneth, I had um, community service to ha- to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it was actually for a college um, scholarship and I was working two full-time jobs going to school. There was literally no room in my schedule for um, community service. So I was like, I'll just foster a dog. Uh, um, uh, what are we in? Four or five years later? Five years later. Oh, you're still, oh, Nani was a foster. Nani was a foster fail, I found out, is what they call them. And yeah, now she is, I mean, she's my best friend. She's my rock. She's, she's quite literally sometimes why I get out of bed in the morning. That's awesome. How's your spine now? It's incredible. Yeah. Like, I barely have any pain. Um, good flexibility. Actually, more flexibility than most people. So oh, That's awesome. She, she got her spine back. Okay. Yeah. She got her spine back. Yeah. Oh. See what I did there? <laughs> I like that. Man, I am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. At least we're recording this for all posterity. and Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, we all have influences in our lives. Yeah, uh, me particularly, and Kenneth is my major influence today. Um, but let's, let's talk about, and I, I know some of your relatives that you've shared with me were influences, but tell us who's had influences on you. And, uh, you know, I, I want to hear about your family and your influences in life. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it all started when I was really, really young and I went to go visit my great grandmother in the nursing home. I was actually so young. I don't even remember what this guy looks like. And he decided to give me some unsolicited advice. It was this really old dude. And they often do give unsolicited advice. Thanks, Cash. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it starts. Wow, that, that went poorly for me. <laughs> and he told me, he goes, listen to your elders, because they will, they will tell you how to avoid the mistakes that you're trying to avoid. And he, well, he didn't say it exactly like that. I literally can't remember because I was so young. But that held with me to this day, and it's helped me mold to who I am today. 
And even though I let my youthful, all-knowing ignorance creep in and make you think that I'm not listening, I am. And it's my parents were able to show me kind of what not to do and how to avoid certain mistakes. And then I found people who were successful in business and people who had successful marriages and people who had what I want. And I'm like, okay, we watch. Now we learn. And it's been incredible getting to make these people my friend and also my mentors at the same time. Cool. You got to have mentors because there's too many tour mentors out there. Um, that was a better joke in my head than when I said it out <laughs> loud. So we, we need to work on that. Um, so you had a quote, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. <laughs> that's, um, I guess like that's, I don't know what my dad actually said growing up. He used to say, like, he, but then he'd always follow it up with, but I'm always the smartest in the room. So it was kind of his, like, arrogance. But I definitely, I grew up hearing that if you're in the smartest room, you're, if you're the smartest person in the, in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I made sure that I, which really sucked when I was in high school because my peers were great. And, uh, but now that I'm part of the bong, like, everybody in there has knowledge that I don't have. And that's the biggest thing is finding what they're smart at and what they're good at, right? Because you might not know more about fitness than I do, but you know more about finance than I do. True. And you know more about having a happy marriage than I do, right? So I want to learn more about that. Cool. So we talked a little bit earlier about reading books and grabbing the knowledge and the wisdom of the people before us. Let's, Let's talk about reading books and what you're reading and, uh, you know, if you have a favorite book or two or three, let's let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, my goodness. Books are amazing. First of all, people put their whole life of mistakes in those books. <laughs> OK, um, like some of my favorite books are, um, oh, my goodness, Raving Fans, um, The Laws of Human Nature, uh, Money University. Actually, while I have you here, would you sign my copy? Oh, you? I would love to sign your copy. Woot woot. Whoa. Oh, Holy that. cow. So um, we're just going to have you sign. You, you yeah. keep talking about books. I am going to. Uh... <laughs> but, yes. Um, other books. I feel like I've like... met the author of that at some point. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> other books like Brain Maker. I've, had, I've read, I've reread, I've annotated all of those books. And like they have given me so much mistake avoidance <laughs> that I could, I could ask for. Look at that. We got a little cute le- like little note. Wow. I'm High taking class. this one seriously. Man, that's cash money right there. Man, when, when this thing sells on uh, at the Goodwill, I want to make sure that people <laughs> know, know who owned it. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> well, that was, that was just completely awkward. Our meeting's over. <laughs> Can't cut. Oh, we didn't even make it to the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's talk about what fires you up and what gets you going. Um, I, you know, I mentioned that earlier, the stuff that you'd come from when your business had a reversal, when things change, when the original goal seemed to have gone the other direction. And, uh, what right now today in 2023, almost 2024, what, what ignites you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so every day I read a letter that I wrote to myself and in that letter, I've written down everyone that I failed, like my grandma and my great aunt, and I've written down everybody that I've uh, that's failed me. And at the end of the letter, it talks about who I can be, and if I don't stop myself. And at the very end, it says, "I will not fail me." Can you repeat that? I will not fail me. And wow. if you see me running. Um, my heart out, if you see me doing any really hard work, I'm repeating that to myself over and over again. That's, I literally ran three miles yesterday and I tried to break my record and that was what was literally screaming through my head the entire time. Wow. Okay. That, that would be, uh, that'd yeah. be a pretty good bumper sticker right there. Yeah. Cool. Reading, reading that letter makes me angry, you know, it makes me sad and it makes me hungry for a better tomorrow and it, it sets me on fire. That's awesome. So when, when did it happen for you? Um, did you have a moment where there was a line in the sand, like I'm all in, I'm all out. Like, was there really a moment? 
Like I could take this job at the bank or I can follow my, like what, tell me what was going on in your world that made, made you decide yeah, so I guess like anybody, I've had a, several like line in the sand moments. Hopefully, um, one of the biggest ones that I had though was when I dropped out of college. I realized that that conventional job, conventional learning, wasn't for me, and my path wasn't clear. But I just knew that that wasn't for me. And when I drew that line in the sand, um. I, it was very scary. It was, it was one of the most scary things I've ever done. But it has led to a life filled with love and adventure and people that I can call my family. Man, that is awesome. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to thank some of our sponsors here on the Cash Flow Show this evening. We turn the show over to Mr. Kenneth. Thank you very much. Hey there, listeners. Before we dive back into today's episode, we've got a special shout out to our amazing sponsors. This podcast is coming to you from the studio at Elevate Coworking. Signage provided by CM Customs and features amazing entrepreneurs from the Tulsa Business Owners Networking Group. We're sponsored by MFP, my financial plan on the World Wide Web at joinmfp.com. And this show's produced by the audio video expert at Kenneth Bach and Photography. With these amazing sponsors at top of mind, let's return to cash flows already in progress. All right, Dave, thank you for that. And thank you for our sponsors up here on the signboard. Uh, we love you guys, and we could not do this without you. So, Jillian, you, you told us, um, we're here with Jillian Olivia, the 2021 Business Owners Networking Group Entrepreneur of the Year, Entrepreneur of the Month in uh, 2020. I guess it would have been 2021. I don't know how it all goes. But, uh, and, and she is uh, a rare item in the world. Plato, he was a philosopher. <laughs> Plato? Plato? I don't know if it was Plato or Plato. Plato, well. Uh, Plato is the philosopher. Plato are the toys, which makes me kind of, I mean, I, I actually have been thinking about this and, and I'm a little bit distracted. What's the deal with the red car here? Speaking of toys. Oh, um, yeah. Well, that's my mouse. Oh. I never quite grew up. I still play with Hot Wheels at my house. And I'm like, you know, I mean, the mouse was a big technological leap for me. Mm. And uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting one, but I... You know, I buy them like 10 at a time because they cost about $7. Gotcha. But, you know, for all of your mousing needs, use, I, I, don't, I don't know what kind I, of I figured is. most people are trying to keep mice out of their cars, but I guess this is one, one way to approach the situation. <laughs> do what we got to do. All right. Thank you for that. We're going to go back to Jillian Olivia, the 2021 Entrepreneur of the Year for the Business Owners Networking Group. Um, you talked about getting rid of the fear in some of the things that we talked about, you talked about running with the fear. Just try to explain that to the people listening. Cause I, you know, I'm a guy that, uh, I mean, fear is a thing. Fear is real. It's palpable. And even if we might imagine it, it still feels a certain way. Talk to us about running with the fear. Yeah. I guess, um, when I learned how controlling fear can be, I watched and did myself when I would fear something so much as I'd, I'd watch that thing that I feared come to fruition because I feared it. Not because, like, it was just going to happen anyway. It was because you, you focused on that one thing and you quite literally drove the car to that thing. And I realized that kind of getting over the fear wasn't really the right thing because it was always there didn't matter whether it was public speaking for me or doing a podcast or something like that. I right. still have that fear, but it's about kind of making friends with it. And you really can't make good friends with it because you're afraid of it, right? So you want to run with it, right? And that's where that um, exhilaration comes in, that adrenaline, that drive pushing you. You're like, you're running with the fear. I can't let fear outrun me. Yeah. Like that's, that's not how this works. So you always want to be in step with your fear, if not in front of it. I've heard people say kind of wacky things about fear. It's false evidence appearing real. But like if you have a crazy dream at night that's scary, your heart's beating fast. You know, it 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 appears very, very real. And, uh, you know, I've, I, what I learned, Kenneth, is the, the danger in things is real, but the fear part is optional. And I got that uh, lady named Susan Jeffers wrote a great book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was... Uh, I, you know, when you're growing up 
in Shawnee, Oklahoma, where I'm from, and you don't have a lot of business experience, you have a lot of fear. And I, I admire how you've overcome that. So, well, let's, let's talk about, um, talk about some of your screw ups. <laughs> okay. Let's, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about that. I'd like to hear about some of the biggest mistakes that you've made in business and how did you, not just how did you overcome them, but how did you acknowledge them? Like, what did you have to say to yourself to go, man, this isn't working or I didn't work or I got it wrong. How, talk us through that. Talk us through those moments. So I failed a lot. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for uh, like off and on six years now, seven, nope, eight years now. And since uh, you were four, <laughs> yeah, something, <laughs> somewhere around there. <laughs> and, um, so I've learned how to accept failure for what it is. But, um, one of the biggest failures, one of the most recent failures I've had was I expected people in my business to make these grand changes to their lifestyles, right? Um, These are your clients you're talking about? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, clients and friends, because they would come to me for advice, and I'd be like, oh, okay, well, you're clearly not sleeping enough. You, like, I'm, I expect you to go from four hours a night to eight hours a night, or from eating processed sugar at every meal to not eating any at all, or not having lifted a weight ever. And, like, now we go to the gym five days a week. Wow. And these are people who have full lives, businesses to run, families, the, the whole nine, if I'm expecting them to do all this and not add stress to their life, like I realize now that I, I was, I was kidding myself. Right. Um, and so I guess when you said like, how did I realize that is I was talking to a friend or a mentor, you know, one of the people that I can go to for advice. And I'm like, why aren't people getting it? Right. Like it's, it, it's not hard. She's like, well, um, like I couldn't adopt that to my lifestyle. And I was like, Oh snap. That makes sense because you have a full life. You have kids. You have a family. You have a job. And when I realized that, I was like, I got to ask myself the biggest question, which was, what is that person's first step to achieving their goal? So, I mean, there are people like me out there, and they're kind of maniacs who, you know, maybe they want to lose weight or get in better shape. And all of a sudden they're like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to run a marathon a day and I'm going to eat nothing but spinach and lettuce and kale I'm sorry i just we just lost all of our kale advertisers there i, I love the, kale yeah we'll have to go so. out and find some more sponsors now sorry for the uh, kale industries that uh but uh what do you think about making tiny changes a little bit at a time is that is that how the average person can overcome you know some of the stresses that you had about them yeah that's exactly how you make those incremental changes that will help you create a habit that will stay right yeah. running a marathon every single that's 26.2 miles that's a lot i meant like, driving a marathon oh, okay but, well that's yeah. Yeah, running it that's who would do that <laughs> but yeah. like you, that takes hours for a trained professional like that was my big thing when i started running i didn't like running i just decided to do it because i knew that i could get good at it right and when I started running. I did the exact same thing you said because I'm that kind of headspace. I was like, oh, okay, I can run a half marathon. Why not? Um, and I did, and it sucked. But <laughs> now, how, how long ago did you run the half marathon? Uh, I think that it was the Route 66 half marathon, so I think it was like what, a month ago. And how much preparation did you have for that? Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a averagely, not averagely, I'm a, I'm a fit person. So I, I would say that I had preparation in the sense of like staying active, swimming, you know, keeping a healthy lifestyle, have healthy body. Um, so it wasn't like I was going from zero to a hundred. I was maybe going from like 70 to a hundred, but I ran, I practiced once beforehand. Um, and yeah, was, how many miles did you log in the two months prior to the half marathon? Maybe if we're counting dedicated, probably about 20 miles. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's, I was going to run it too. That was so. approximately 19 more than me. Yeah. Wow. Well, they, there are 13.1 miles. So I practiced yeah. once and that was the 13.1. And then, okay. yeah. And then the other one, few were just like, just trial, seeing what happens. So how, how do goals work in with, um, uh, with your clients? Uh, like, so let's just make up a client so that I don't embarrass myself. But let's make up a client smash. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and wants to lose 15 pounds and be a little bit more fit so that they can tie their shoes. Like, 
what what's a decent small goal that somebody like me could set? Is it just diet? Is it just exercise? What well, I mean, are there are there what are the elements like? You know, tell our listeners what are the elements to getting healthy? Yeah, I, that's it's so cool because I get to customize that to every person. Um, one of my one of one of my great friends uh, needed to get healthy because he had a stroke, and I was like, just drink more water, man. Like, that's it. Just start with drinking water. Right. For somebody who, like you said, just wants to tie their shoes, like that's a great goal. I love that goal. Um, like, how busy is your life right now? Right. Right. Can can you uh, adopt going to the gym? Can you uh, adopt a healthier lifestyle? Like as far as eating goes. Um, if not, then how about let's try and get a little bit more sleep. You know, how, let's try and get a little bit more water in our day. Um, I, th- I think a lot of people are worried about what they have to give up in order to gain health. And some of the advice even that you've given me is drink a little more water, get a little more sleep. That doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go to a gym. It's just a good starting point that you can do uh, a little bit. I think that's such great advice. And then maybe work a little on the diet and work a little bit on, you know, just nutrition in general. How does somebody work with somebody like, you you've used this phrase meal prep around me and to me that's like making a reservation at a restaurant (laughs) that's what meal prep is um tell us about working with you what your clients that work with you what does that look like so it it, again depends on what my clients need it's the coolest part about what i do and working for myself is i get to design that um some of my clients are completely online all they need is the accountability they need that community and a lot of them are reward based, so I have programs set in place that are reward, uh, like uh, yeah, they help give you rewards. Like my Battle Pass is designed for um, if you guys have ever played like Candy Crush or like Call of Duty or anything like that. You every like point you get, you get to like, get a cool skin or get. There's a, there's a game called Call of Duty. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's military. It's not like. A bathroom joker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I eat the kale and the fiber. But no, that's I think cool. I just won Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like gamification. You're adding yeah. points and things like that to help make it more interesting for exactly. them to participate. Yeah. 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 And it's, and they'll win things like t shirts or a sleep mask, water bottles, things like that, like that encourage them to keep pushing and moving forward. And that, I have a free one for just my friends and people who like, don't necessarily want to put money behind it. Right. And then I have a one that's for people who really want to put money behind it. And that I try and give it unleashed package for, uh, and again, that's completely online. So I have people all across the world or not world right now, but just us right now that do it. And it's amazing. And then I have an in town program that we do where it's also incentive based, right? It starts at a certain package price. And then depending on how much you participate, that number goes down. And I tell them, it's like, I have to work harder to get you in the class. That costs money, right? So if I don't really have to work hard and you show up, we're good to go, right? You can, uh, That's like, awesome. So it's really cool to encourage them to get to their goals that way. So I know that you've had lots of really interesting and wonderful success stories. There's one in this last year that a lot of people followed around the United States. Can, are you able to share about your client? Absolutely. I she yeah, she went on the news about it. I don't think she's really okay. <laughs> trying to keep it that quiet. And I yeah. So that's my client Laura. She climbed Mount Everest, um, and she did it without just kind of like me in that half marathon. She comes to me in the very be- a very beginning of October, and she's like, "I'm gonna climb Everest in May." I think it was, wow. and I'm like, "Okay, all right." Um, what, what experience do you have? She was none. Okay. All right. Let's do this. She, she had a, never climbed before. She had, she had done minor, minor hikes, but nothing, nothing even close to what she was um, going for. And she took to it. She was one of those people just like you and I, who, when she finds it's something, a goal, that is her only focus, hyper focused on that one thing. She would work out as every time I told her to, she would eat exactly what I told her to drink as much water as I told her to, and sleep as much as I told her to. And once somebody's like that, like those are the people that had me thinking that other people were like that. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that most people aren't like that. Okay, so she makes it to the summit. She's done. She's. Does she call you? Like I want to know about the moment when you realized 
that your effort towards her and for her and on her behalf resulted in something so successful that it's like it's just hard to imagine. What's that phone call like when you get that phone call? So she didn't summit. She she went to a base camp. Uh, which, whatever which her different. whatever her goal was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when she hit that goal, she she was posting about it all over Facebook, which was just amazing to know that she was okay. Because that was my thought process. I hope she's okay. I hold up my clients so close to my heart because I don't know. You just become like invested, right? And so when uh, I saw her post, I'm like, okay, she's okay. Okay, she's okay. Okay, but it's not going to take my stress until I see her in person. And when she came home, she came to the gym, and we saw each other, and she screamed, and I screamed, and we ran to each other, and when we hugged, I, I, tears started streaming, and she, wow. we started talking about her experience, and she told me that there was a time on the mountain when she couldn't breathe, and that's because oxygen's very thin up there, and she told me she was hearing my voice in her head telling her that once she begins to panic, that's when it's all over. Right? You can allow the fear to be there. But you have to remain calm. And I likened it to swimming, right? When you're in the water, the water doesn't care whether or not you drown. Like you, If you panic, if you freak out, you will drown. And that's just a fact. <laughs> so it's if you remain calm and you allow yourself to float, if you allow yourself to just do what you can in that moment and know that you will not die, you'll be fine. And she said she heard my voice. She heard her kids' voices. And it brought her back down from the mountain safe. And wow. I, yeah, I rode that high for months. I'm like, I'll probably still ride that high. I think I'm on that high right now. Kenneth, you? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm high as a kite. Yeah. On that one, <laughs> <Okay>. For sure. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Jillian, you have had uh, quite a career. You're 24? Yeah. Yeah. I just turned 24. 24. You've had quite a career. You've had some business changes. Um, I, I know you've, um, you're, be loved in the in the bong group a lot of people really have enjoyed getting to know you let's uh let's wrap this up and hear from you about what is what do you feel like success is and it, it can just you know what what's your definition of it how do you feel it because like some of the stories that you've shared you have had like that is a crazy success story you know i'm I've been in business 42 years. I haven't heard too many success stories that are that prolific. And like you can, I mean, you're, you being a grandma somewhere down the road is already sealed in, man. It is good because you got stories. And some of what we do is about the story. What a great story. But talk to us about your definition of success. So I guess success comes with goals. And when I set a goal, I set it to fail. Um, And... Every, I guess it's kind of similar to the idea of like shoot for the moon, aim, uh, at least you'll land, land amongst the stars kind of quote thing. Yep. Um, but every day that I don't allow that inner wimp to win it was a successful day. Not say the word success, but successful day. Wow. Sure. That's pretty cool. Uh, hang on a second. I'm you're, for it. you're a smart guy. Thank you. If he, if you aim for the moon, you'll hit the, the stars are further away than the moon, aren't they? They, they are. And in, in particular, <laughs> there's one that's extra close and super hot. Which, which is? Uh, well, that would be, well, we call it the sun, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a star. That's a bad goal. Yeah. I feel like I would <laughs> melt. I mean, the thing is, you know, but anyway, but the sentiment it's, you, okay. you know, you talk about storytelling. The story is good. This, yeah. I, I think one of the things we need to work on here is cash flows is, you know, like, whatever those phrases are that we need to use. That's right. You know, okay, very cool. All right, let's wrap it up. What do you want to be remembered for in your lifetime, Jillian? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I want to be remembered for giving more than I take. Yeah? Mm -hmm. There it is. Give to my clients. I want to give to my friends. I want to give the knowledge that I've learned. Um, I want to, yeah, I just want to give. Where can people find you on Facebook? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Jillian Olivia. It's G-Y-L-L-I-A. Jillian with a G. With a G and a Y. And a Y. And, and a y. some L's. And maybe an L's. N or two and an I. Yep. yep. A-E-I-O-U. Sometimes or, Y. Yes. Yeah. Or they can find me at JillianOlivia.com. JillianOlivia.com. Jillian, thank you for being here today. We're going to wrap up our show. Uh, Kenneth, that is our second show of uh, 108 we have planned. And if you're a listener, and we would love it if you would download this show, share it with your friends. Kenneth and I have very fragile egos, and it would be really awesome 
uh, and hopefully we're a value, a value to you. Um, I know Jillian, you've helped so many people overcome these obstacles that are literally life changing. Um, and the work that you do is just exceptional and we're, we're proud to know you. And, uh, for all of you out there, we're glad you stopped by for a moment and, uh, to our team here at Elevate Coworking at 91st and Sheridan in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're glad you're here. Kenneth Bacham, Lori Zeller, Clarence Shaw, and all of the cool people at the Bong, the Business Owners Networking Group. Uh, thank you for being part of this. We got a lot going on, but mostly we want to thank our listeners. We want to thank you for being here. And if you want to reach all of us on Facebook, we're pretty easy to find. So until our next show, you guys make good choices, be nice to each other, love one another, and let's make today the best day ever. Good night to our four listeners in Salisaw, Henrietta, Wagoner, Bolegs, and uh, to the three of you that keep liking our posts out there on the Facebook. Y'all need anything from Quick Trip? That's our show for today. Stay tuned for another riveting edition of Cash Flows. 